All right, now we're going to look at solving quadratics by completing the square. I put some general rules over here on this right side. Uh, if need be, pause the video, make sure you're getting them written down. But one of the things that must happen is the leading coefficient must be a one. So in my two examples here, I have a one for the leading coefficient. I need to isolate the quadratic and the linear term. So isolate the quadratic and the linear term. If I look back here at number one, it simply means I want the x squared and the 6x alone. So I'm going to take that negative 3 and move it to the other side would give me a positive 3. So that's what I mean by get those two guys alone, the quadratic and the linear. Now our process. Take half the linear coefficient, square it, add it to both sides. We're going to look at the linear coefficient. Take half, square it, add it. So my linear coefficient back in number one is six. If I take half of six, I get three. And then I'm going to add three squared, which is nine, to both sides. So half of six is three. Three squared is nine. I'm adding nine to both sides. Now our general rule for equations was we can do anything we want as long as we do it to both sides. What I'm doing by taking half and squaring it is picking this one number that's going to help me. I can really add anything I want to both sides, but the 9 is going to help me because the left side now factors to x plus 3 squared. And of course we get 12 on the right, but this is the key right here. That's a perfect square binomial. So this factors to x plus 3 squared. I can remember it was a 3 because that's where the 9 came from. Plus, because I had a plus. Now it looks like what we did before. So the last step I said factor, which we did. Solve using square roots. My quadratic's isolated. Here comes that square root method back again. x plus 3 would be plus or minus the square root of 12. If I square root both sides. Move that 3 over, negative 3, plus or minus 2 root 3. All right, so there's my 3, move it over. 12 is 4 times 3. If we simplify that root, I can square root 4. There's my 2 coming out and the 3 staying in. So go through those same steps on this second one. Leading coefficient 1. Hey, uh, I'm good there. Isolate quadratic and linear term. Okay, so I want to move the 5. x squared minus 8x equals 9. 4, 5 is 9, so I've got that. Now we're going to take half the linear term. So half of 8, linear coefficient. Squared is 16. Add to both sides. Now, I know when you take half of negative 8, it's negative 4, but we're squaring it, so it doesn't matter. Negative 4 squared is still 16. So we're going to be adding 16 to both sides. Factor. This will factor to x minus 4. There's that perfect square. 4 from the 16, middle is minus. So 16 enable me to factor it that way. Right side is 25. Okay, there. Now my square root method comes in. x minus 4 equals plus or minus root 25. So now to get x alone, I can move that 4 over. So positive 4 plus or minus and root 25 is 5. So one difference here in the final answer. Back on number 1, we can't really add or subtract this. We could write it separate. I don't care if you leave the plus or minus in there. We could write two separate terms. But here I can actually add and subtract. So I need to finish it out because I can combine them. 4 plus 5 is 9. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. All right, number three, what I did was I made us take care of this leading coefficient. So leading coefficient must be a one. All right, so if the leading coefficient must be a one, 
and I've got a three here, my first step is to make this a one. So I need to divide everything by three. So if I divide everything by three, I get x squared minus two x plus one is zero. Now I've satisfied that first condition. Following straight through like before now. Isolate the quadratic and linear terms. x squared minus 2x equals negative 1 when I move the 1 over. Right now we're completing the square process. x squared minus 2x. Alright, so we take half the linear. Half of 2 is 1. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because we're squaring it. So half of 2 is 1. Squared is 1. And then add that one to both sides. Factor x minus 1 squared equals negative 1 plus 1, 0. Looks a little bit nicer. And so then if I square root x minus 1, is plus or minus root zero. I square up both sides. And so in this case, x just equals one. X would just equal one because the square root of zero is still zero. Okay. Now, one of the things we've talked about, well, that plus or minus is because, hey, we're supposed to get two answers. We're supposed to get two answers because of that square. Okay. Just to kind of show you why we've got one. Now, we did the square root method here. But if you look at using your old factoring method, so if you were to factor this, it would actually factor to x minus 1, x minus 1 is 0. Solve by factoring, x equals 1, x equals 1. So there really is two ones there. Okay. Uh, that's what we call a double root. It's a repeated factor. All right, so one's the answer. We could write the answer as 1 and 1, 1 comma 1 or we can just say one since it was a repeater. But that's what happened there as far as getting down to one. All right, last look here. I just made one change and put a number on the right side instead of a zero. It's not gonna change anything. I've still gotta move this five over. My leading coefficient is a one. I don't need to worry about division this time. So if I move that five over, I get negative 5, negative 10 plus 5. They're isolated. Take half. Half of 4 is 2. Squared is 4. So I'm adding 4 to both sides. Factor. x plus 2 squared is negative 1. Square root x plus 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And I also got this one up here because now we're getting one of those i's. Anytime we're square rooting, that i can show up. So I would have negative 2 plus or minus i when I move this 2 over. And there's my two solutions.